All right, welcome back. Welcome back to Greenbox Gaming plays Delta Green <laughs> Impossible Landscapes. Uh, thank you, Brad. Uh, I am joined by uh, my friends, uh, some of which were in better health than others, like uh, like Brad. So sad. Hello, Brad. Like I've been uh, had a cold last week. Sorry. Um, oh, I thought you told him about the prognosis. Oh, two months. That's a rough. Two months. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He's still here. And that's some dedication. <laughs> if you had two months to live, would you choose to continue this podcast? <laughs> I hope the answer Hell, is yes. That should be all yes. we would do. <laughs> yeah. And I would we need to finish this obligate. campaign before you go, Brad. Hurry, Brad. <laughs> I would force all of you to quit your jobs and do this all day, every day. <laughs> till we uh, finish the campaign. <laughs> so that's Brad playing Hank Ellis. And that you just heard was Dace playing Benji. A yo. And a gentleman's yo. A gentleman's yo. Uh, and we, of course, have Jean playing Benedict, who has a Hello. a kind of parrot <laughs> type thing, some type of stuffed animal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is clearly is that, a wolf. Is that a statement animal? Is that a statement <laughs> piece? That's uh... I don't know. I just thought we might Did be you dry miss- on banter, so I thought I'd supply some material. As you missed that day in elementary school when they covered the difference between parrots and wolves. <laughs> it's on his shoulder. For those who are missing the visual gag, uh, Jean has a it's, small uh, uh, stuffed animal wolf, apparently, on his shoulder. In a very parrot-like manner. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm following. You know what? I'll just put it away. It's causing too much bad grief. vibes. <laughs> it ends up being what breaks up the podcast. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it was already wolf. so tenuous. You know, yeah. I mean, we're basically like um, Stevie Nicks and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh God, I know you're. T- I know the band you're talking about. I can't remember all of a sudden. Anyway, uh, I had a question for you guys. Are you talking about Fleetwood Mac? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's us. We're Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> we're, that we're, level of success, creativity, and also inward tension. Yes. Inward, inward we're not sexual all tension. <laughs> yeah, dating sexual each other. Tension. <laughs> I call Stevie Nicks. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know if I want to be her or to fuck her. Uh, Anyways, hey. go on. Uh, Por que no nos dos uh, is, is, the, is the question. Uh, anyway, so I have a question for you guys for today. Um, what is, you know, the kind of in the theme of what we do in Delta Green being a horror podcast, we don't. I don't get into the horror element of the banter very often, but uh, what is the scariest thing that has ever happened to you in real life? Uh, and not necessarily something that you look back on it and it was like, oh, that was scary. But like in the moment, you were convinced that something like that something really, really scary was going on. Um, I know mine. Like, I've, and I've th- got mine. And it involves you. Does it involve me? I wonder if it's the same (laughs) thing, actually, because mine involves you and Brad. I've never Uh, experienced fear. fear. Uh, Was was this when we were out on the trails? Uh, Oh, no. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. uh, So You want to go first, set the mood? Yeah, yeah. So I think Brad was there for this. I think Brad, I think it was me, you, and Brad. What are you talking about, running in the dark? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we were out on this area. It was this big, long running trail. It's just really just straight shot of this road. I think it's three miles one way, um, and it's almost entirely straight, kind of out in the woods on the edge of town uh, where we grew up and where we went to college. And we were out running at like, God, I mean, it was probably like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, we just all decided to go out for a run. Um, and when we were out there... We're running, and we see these two lights in front of us. And they look like headlights, you know, like the way they're spaced and whatnot. And which is weird, because there's supposed to be no vehicles on this road to begin with. And so it's coming, but it's coming really, really slow. But then the lights, as we're watching, as we're running, it's coming, you know, it's like meeting us on this pretty small road. The lights kind of began to shift a little bit, like that they weren't keeping their spacing. 
And it was just like this really like uncanny valley, like what the fuck is that kind of thing? And then they started to move like almost like more erratically. And there was definitely this element where I think at some point in time, one of us was like, like someone sat loud, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> because it was just like our heads just weren't in the zone. Now, when we got to it, obviously it was two bicyclists who were riding with their little headlights on. But it was just this very visceral, like, just like, what panic. is that? Yeah, just Run. like this very yeah. kind of deep down panic for something that overall didn't seem that big of a deal, you know, in, in I, hindsight. I wasn't scared because also, like Brad, I, I feel no fear. Mm. Um, well, it's but because I think Brad was nothing, like, I think is what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. <coughs> But I, I really thought it was an ATV. Like, I thought it was a park ranger on an ATV. Hmm. And then um, they just, like, drifted off so suddenly. Yeah. So, like, it was just startling. It's like, shit, we're about to get abducted by aliens. And that's what this <laughs> yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. I remember that distinctly going through my mind. Of, like, is this aliens? <laughs> and I don't, I'm not really big in that stuff either. I'm just like, uh-oh. <laughs> like... And obviously, what's more likely, like, I don't know, the idea of bicycles <laughs> on a place where there are bicycles all the time just didn't come to mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, it's been a long run. <laughs> it's at the end of a long run. Yeah, it was at the end of the, the entire six miles. So, anyway, uh, you got yours, Dace? Yeah. Um, it was when we were probably. 10 or 11, we were camping out in a tree house that Joe's stepdad had mm. built for us. And we were about to go to sleep when we heard this noise in the forest. And it's impossible to describe this noise, but to the best of my memory, to the best I can recall, it sounded like somebody hitting a piece of sheet metal with a hammer. Still to this day, I have no idea what the fuck it was, but I was so freaked out, like the kind of fear that just paralyzes you. Like I thought it was mm. a bobcat or a serial right. killer. Like this is just the kind of noise that you don't hear in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And this is, was pretty in the middle of nowhere. It was where where I grew up, so it's like, oh yeah, we weren't that far from the yeah. house, and, um, but it was. Um, yeah, I think we actually we did have a shotgun with this, which. <laughs> Uh, Mississippi, two uh, ten year olds conflict? with a shotgun. Uh, kid, kids growing up, <laughs> treehouse. Kids who grow up in the country Jeez. just kind of get entrusted with firearms. That's just part That's of it. Because you got to watch out for those blacksmithing bobcats. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> just yowling. That's what it as, was. As it... A legend is born. <laughs> a legend is born. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the most scared I've ever been in my life. Just because I had no clue what it could be like it was just completely um yeah yeah it is this that, that fear of the unknown right it's just because exactly. it could be that's anything it. right that's it yeah. what what about you brad what you got i wasn't really scared i can't remember if i said told this story and neither do i i don't believe in aliens either i'm not saying it was aliens okay. But <laughs> okay, but there it is. <laughs> Go on. Uh, this was like some weird experimental aircraft. Okay, it was me and Jake. Hmm. Yeah, we had been drinking a little bit. But I don't just. Uh... <laughs> what a great way to start. <laughs> so but our I just state don't, uh... of mind might have been a little <laughs> altered. Really but I just don't like you know. S we both saw this thing, and it was literally uh, outside one of our friends' house on the square and uh at first it was uh like you know five in the morning or something like that or four mm -hmm. and uh it was uh i thought it was geese flying at first because it was a v shape hmm. but it was a very dim li dim lights on it and i swear it just like flew over us and it was like super low to the ground and made no noise oh uh, and this was in cool. nowadays i would say okay maybe it's like drones but this was like in uh, right, when we were right. in college, the uh, you know, yeah, so 2011, 2012, something drones. like that. Yeah. Anyway, did that was go... true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so did it make an insanely loud <laughs> buzzing, annoying. It was a silent noise? one. It was trippy. Okay. I wasn't really scared, but I was like, "What? Did what we just see that?" that? Well, I don't know. Like you know, where we grew up and where we went to school. I mean, you know, there was a Air Force base fairly close. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's not Make, insane that... You I know, wonder how long the military has had drones before it became common in the civilian world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially, like, the Air Force. Like, the shit we had wasn't noteworthy <laughs> at all. But then again, you still don't know what's secret and what's being worked on, right? Yeah. And I Ooh, think I do remember... Do you have classified knowledge that you can't talk <coughs> about, Joe? Oh, pray tell. Nothing interesting. <laughs> I... I, it's, I promise you. It's, <laughs> but you care to share it's it? It's not fun. In this public space? No. No, I don't. <laughs> it's like... This seems like the right forum for whistleblowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It would be whistleblowing because there wasn't like... Whistleblowing implies that there's like something going on. It's just like, yep, the military's doing well, the then, military stuff. Surprise. That's just boring. <laughs> that's what you would say, isn't it? That's what they want mm-hmm. you to... That, that's what they brain... I'm being brainwashed. That's really what it is. Um, <laughs> what about you, John? I had to skip all my friends' birthday parties when I was growing up because I had to go to uh, Italian school on Saturdays oh. instead of going to everybody's birthdays. It's a sad story. But also, at this Italian school, they rented out... <laughs> was that the except, scary thing? Except, I missed everyone's this is, birthday. It's all, wait for the... This is just... Also, it's growing. It's Italian all school, is, like, is that where they teach you how to That's eat spaghetti? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they say no spoon and they hit your hand. Yeah, you with a, with a, a spoon. With a like, ruler. Don't you do that. That's a trap. You put that down right now. Uh, <laughs> no, just, just to learn uh, Italian language more than anything else. Okay. <laughs> but they, they hired out uh, a school that was obviously just empty over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty much like 20 people for this really, really large school. So we used to kind of bring our own lunches and then go walk around during the 10 minute break or whatever that we had. And it was a creepy looking school. It's a creepy looking school. We kind of walked around a little bit. And then at one point, okay, this is when I was like 10 or 12 or something, but all of us were kind of on edge. And then something made a noise in the window. I think actually it was something falling down. Like there were little owls painted up on the windows, you know, like kids that had covered oh, in okay, some owls yeah. in the windows. And we were really small. So we were looking up at these things. And then suddenly, like, we had the feeling like one of them just like popped up it was like <laughs> and we ran and um to that day to this day i i it was probably not aliens it was probably press stick or sticky tack okay <laughs> yeah it probably was a, a failure adhesive not ghost Bad or uh, sticky tack. what a bizarre <laughs> yeah. story that was... <laughs> well, but it's like but it's like you know think about it like well, i mean think about like think about that idea of like even like daces like when you're a kid right like you're it's a kid a fever dream <laughs> yeah this is like what the fuck yeah. italian school <laughs> Like what does that? What are you saying? Oh, no, 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 that's the horror element. Well, but like you know, like Italian you're a kid, right? On a Saturday, you're a kid around other kids, and like you kind of can get each other wound up, and you're in this like kind of like yeah. us, any building. Like we talked about like that, like the idea of the liminal space. Like it's just innately scary, like yeah. it, or innately unnerving. So it's like you're already yeah, kind of at that space. It could have been an owl you heard, Dace, because they make some crazy yeah. noises. They sound like monkeys. I- I think the most likely thing is it was a buck in heat. Maybe. Oh, when they blow out. Just just going yeah. at a piece of metal. <laughs> just, just wailing. <laughs> just fucking a piece of metal. <laughs> just hopping it. <laughs> is that what they do? I feel, that guy, I, I, this is why you guys need shotguns. This is why we get to <laughs> carry shotguns out there. <laughs> <laughs> and God forbid when they confuse you for the piece of metal. You don't want to be that person. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be. Just don't go to sleep in a space blanket. You'll be happy you had that firearm. Ah, oh, man. Speaking of weird spaces to be in <laughs> and weird situations to find yourself, uh, <laughs> our crew has found themselves in a bit of a sticky wicket. Uh, after coming back from Boston, after coming back to Boston, after coming back from the night world, the crew uh, found themselves needing some rest, um, trying to just. Trying to get their ducks in a row, figure out what they're going to do next. We're supposed to go to this hotel. What is this hotel? Then only to discover that, and I don't, I don't know who posited it, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, I neither confirm nor deny it, but it was, it was posited that Delta Green had gotten involved and had basically told the world that these guys were escaped mental patients from the Dorchester. 
that they were highly dangerous, and they found their pictures all over televisions, um, all over the news. They were then contacted by, uh, apparently, uh, Mr. Wilde, or someone on behalf of Mr. Wilde, who invited them to a video store right down the street from where they are to talk with the lawyers of Doctor or of uh, Ed Whist, uh, specifically uh, Robert Norris, who apparently represents his estate, who told them that there was a debt to be owed, that apparently they owed Mr. Whist, who you guys know are, is linked to Mr. Wild in the night world, um, that you guys apparently owed him something, but that, that arrangement was no longer relevant so that you guys needed to arrange a new meeting. Um, and they basically gave you a task to perform, and then assured you that you would be paid well, that you'd be you know, rewarded generously. Uh, that being said, I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself because I am missing the part where Benji put on the Cloak of Truth uh, that they got from uh, right. Esther Samahina and boy howdy was that a good time. Uh, I think Benji technically crossed another breaking, limp, breaking moment, but he chose to stave off the insanity which is a chance in and of itself. Uh, and then also kind of, I mean, the only thing, the only thing more damaging to one's uh, sanity than using a body morphing magical cloak is watching someone using a body morphing magical cloak as Benji became his old, now I believe zeroed out bond that you've completely run that bond uh, your old yep. dissertation head, uh, your old like uh, head professor uh, Wendy Wright all the way back from 95 it's a good throwback but yeah the crew finds themselves sitting in the parking lot of this uh, of this old school kind of video rental place um, in the jambulance, having received this assignment. This assignment to go down to the, I believe it is the, let's see, what was the name of the building? I want, I want to get this right. Yes, the Boston Prudential Tower, which is one of the largest towers in all of Boston. You guys have been assigned to go in there, turn on all the lights at a certain time of night, all these different lights, and <laughs> Brad in classic sixth sense ruining fashion went, oh, I bet it's the, I bet it's the yellow sign. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, it's the yellow sign. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so that is where you guys are. So, what are we doing? And I will say, I'm gonna say that by the time that you guys, like basically once there's any downtime or like where you guys aren't actively engaged in something, that that's gonna be when Benji's, um, because you, you repressed this psychological break, but you did, it doesn't go away forever. You delay it, essentially. Um. You're telling me Benji's a ticking time bomb? What? No. <laughs> oh, no. That doesn't <laughs> sound right. <laughs> what I'm saying is because you suffer from uh, catatonic fugues, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to say that by the time you actually manage to get back, that um, I don't want to do it right now. Because I don't want you to just sit there and be quiet. That's kind of dumb for the gameplay portion but basically like if there's a point where you guys are like driving somewhere or something like that like Benji's gonna just kind of be out of it um. okay so this session is gonna be like crank <laughs> Benji's just gonna have to do all the drugs and like <coughs> every now and then as much adrenaline as possible <laughs> every now and then one of you guys just have to reach over there and slap the shit out of Benji <laughs> slap so yeah so you're in the band huh. um, what are you guys gonna do you have this file folder that kind of tells you what to do um, yeah, what now? Mm. <laughs> so, who, who are we more scared of right now? Random, random question to the car. Who are we more scared of right now? And what? ever? Or, what do you mean? Out of everyone <laughs> that has existed? <laughs> are we talking about like... Yeah! Are we talking about blacksmith bobcats or are we talking about like no, uh, <laughs> no hush joe you're not in the car oh. <laughs> <laughs> i get out of the van get out the van 
Uh, no, uh, I'm, I, this is a legitimate question. I think from last time I wanted to understand who we could trust. Now I want to know who we're more afraid of and uh, can see where to go. Uh, yes, uh, Wendy Wright here. Hello, Benedict. That's right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Still. Uh, it did occur to me that by exposing the masses to the yellow sign, we would essentially be doing the very opposite of what we are meant to do as Delta Green agents. Um, therefore, you this still riveting. Identify as a Delta <laughs> Green agent. <laughs> <laughs> Look, asshole! Somebody had to say it out loud. We're on <laughs> starting the conversation. <laughs> it just shut me down. All right, take it away, Hank. <laughs> I, it's it's not a bad. Well, like, what, what, what what Jean? It's a loaded did, question. What, uh, I mean, what Jean uh, slash Benedict said there, like that's not a bad question. Do you still uh, identify as a Delta Green uh, agent? I'm also Wait, trying to gauge his like sanity, so uh, it, I'm I'm not trying to fuck with you. He's as sane as he can be while pretending to be his ex professor. <laughs> you, yeah, you're having this break. conversation yeah. with him and. It's like, and the weird thing is, is like you know that it's a Benji, but the 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 way that this unnatural this unnatural effect works, you cannot see it. You cannot see Benji. It is this woman, okay. as far as you can tell. Like, it's weird. <laughs> okay. Take off that silly disguise. No, 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 no! Don't take it off. Just you, do you? Don't. All right, Let's I won't. not find out what happens if you take that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you just... talking about, Hank? <laughs> oh, God. So creepy. Uh, well, like uh, Benji said, we definitely cannot. Wendy. Wendy. <clears throat> Wendy. 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 Yeah. If I have a vote, I say we do not go through this plan and turn on all these lights and expose the masses to the yellow sign. What if instead of the yellow sign, we turned the lights on in a fashion that formed a gigantic middle finger? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun, for sure. I, For the I'm, not, I'm kind of... I'm okay with that. Uh, <coughs> so we do think that we still need to protect people at this point and well i didn't try joe to just do as little harm as possible joe just gave us some more information no i don't remember anyone saying that delta green put out the hit for us but that way makes way more sense than what we were saying last time oh uh, i was pretty sure of it okay somebody somebody had mentioned it well um But that's probably, uh, I mean, we should have expected something like that because we, uh, something was going to come from us not meeting with them. Uh, I forgot how many sessions back, but we chose not to meet with oh, the, the, the death meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We chose not to go and be and, uh, assembled. Retirement that. party. <laughs> Retirement party. And because of that decision, we're probably, uh, seen as rogue agents. Hmm. Do you think we can get back in their good graces? By turning on uh, these lights in the formation of the yellow sign? Yes. <laughs> no, in the formation of a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> There's anything that Delta Green's going to be like, you know, those guys are kind of, you know what? I know we've had problems with them, so they're kind of fun. Get them back in. They're kind of <laughs> yes. fun. They're kind of fun guys. <laughs> I'm not married to the middle finger. It could be something like a large phallus or a smiley face. <laughs> mm. Can we? That's a good idea. When Ben, when Ben, when G, uh, what are the odds that there's something that could cure the sign? People who have been exposed. What do we? What do we think? I think there's a way for us to figure out if there's a way to. F roll back the damage are you suggesting like a sign that's the opposite of the yellow sign like mm. a, a restorative glyph yeah like voodoo tattoo-esque stuff mm -hmm. 
Maybe some occulty. Well, summon, summon. we did say last session that <clears throat> Joe would allow me to keep researching this um, if I decided to use that as my one action for the night. So maybe this is a good time to re-roll. Yeah, I would say that if you... Contingent on the fact that you're going to have a catatonic... <laughs> you're going to go into a catatonic view here for, for probably an hour. Um, so I, it, I guess it depends on what you guys want to do from here. Like, if you guys just like want to go back to the hotel and try to strategize, let, Benji, <laughs> let Wenji kind of go in and out of this fugue and then give, uh, give him time to, you know, kind of come to his senses. Um, um, and do some yeah, research. we probably should go to another spot... Not the same spot we went to, but a different low-key spot and talk about our next step. Yes. I don't feel oh, quite right. I can feel something coming on. I think I'm going to do something terrible. <laughs> that is oh. reassuring. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Well, as, well, if you guys want to go somewhere, like, like, what are you looking for again? Like, just another rundown hotel? You gonna try yeah. to get another safe house kind of deal? Like, what's what's your feel? Are you saying you need the bathroom, Wenji? <laughs> <laughs> I really quite have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just drive around for a little bit. I think staying mobile is a good idea. And I want to make sure that the jammer is still on. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely just keep the jambulance on all the time. Um, With the jammer, it's got no it's paranoid at this point. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, you can. You can just roll around with the jammer on all the time. The car does need to be on in order to power it. Um, but you know, if you're just driving around, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, can we afford all that gas? <laughs> I'm not worried about you paying for gas. <laughs> stay away no, from my let's stand really purchases. get into this. Yeah, let's really dive into what. <laughs> stay away from them. <laughs> Can someone Google gas diesel? prices in Boston in uh, 2015, please? Uh, right on <laughs> it. Gas price to standard purchase converter. <laughs> really, <com>. really riveting. <laughs> really <laughs> riveting podcast stuff right there. Um, okay, so you guys just want to kind of... Yeah, I think we should probably let him experience his episode, but also see if we can find out some more information I don't know. It might just be a dead end, but it's probably worth pursuing now that we've got this opportunity. Maybe we can undo some of the damage, reach out to Delta Green, and make ourselves... Oh, you want to reach back out to Delta Green in order to figure this out? Only if we can fix this. I think we can't come to them heavy, empty-handed, because they were just going to get bullets to the face. But if they need us, Mm. less bullets to the face. Remind me why they want to kill us. Because we didn't go to that meeting, is what I'm theorizing. So we haven't had contact with a, our head, handler or anyone in quite a while. Hmm. I think they cleaned up just before. We knew about Marcus dying, right? Or do we not know? You got the impression that Marcus is no longer answering his phone. Um, it was it was right after, you. it was the day after you guys sent, or the day or two after, you guys sent, um, what's her name? Uh, Citri, Ophelia Citri, that you handed her over. Um, and then after that, you guys were already kind of, <sighs> I think, heading back to Boston. Um, and then you kind of lost contact with Marcus. And that was when you were invited for this meeting. Okay. Um, so are we, we're doing a hotel room or what? What about a nice state park? We're going to sleep in the park? Near Boston? Are there? I don't know uh, if there's a state park in Boston. <laughs> I, uh, I will say, because it was talked about a good bit last time, and again, like I always want to be I always want to be aware of the difference between character knowledge and um, and player knowledge. Benji, you do have this interesting feeling about this demon, this Remax agent realtor uh, demon. Um, oh, I forgot about her. 
Yes. No, I, I was sure. I was thinking you probably forgot about it. So it's like... And I think, and keep in mind, if I can remember which of the demons it was, I think it was Malthus. Yes, it was Patricia McSwain. Yes, Patricia McSwain, um, who Benji had had this idea that was the demon Malthus, with a PH. Um, and. So, yeah, you, you get the impression that there is. There's something there, and there was an idea I think that Benji had had that maybe you guys could reach out and see what this demon had to say. And then also, there was another demon. There was someone else. There was another business card there that Benji was also pretty sure was another demon. Um, this uh, Marie J. Malthus, which is very similar to Malthus. Yeah. <clears throat> I wrote down... Um... Benji now has some sort of connection to demons. Uh oh. Um, oh, you turned into a robot for us. Uh, am I back? You're good. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're back. I wrote down that Benji has some sort of connection to demons now. Um, could I just like yeah. ring him up in my head? Could I give a, a mental if, phone call? If, if you're asking me if Benji wants to do, Benji has the idea right now that he feels like he could find the demons that he wants to find. Like, you don't know. Okay. What the, now, obviously, this is a little more distinct because you have business cards. But Benji gets the idea that you could probably reach beyond that. Uh, gentlemen, there is another course of action that we could take. I could reach out directly to this Patricia McSwain. McSwain. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again, you, you cut, I couldn't quite catch that last part. <laughs> Patricia McSchwalmer. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but, yes, uh, I believe she's a demon. She could offer some perspective. That, possibly another option. <clears throat> that's my vote right now. As we, yes, we go find her. Wow. <laughs> well, how the mighty have, have, we've how, come a long way. How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> where Hank's like, <laughs> well, you know what? You know what, guys? Let's go talk to the demon. Well, uh, <laughs> one thing I'd, I would highly... I'm not gonna do. I really don't want to do is put this yellow sign on the, on the, uh, this skyscraper. I think we're all agreed. So we can't go Unless back to, to. Uh, Mr. Wild, and uh, I also don't quite like the idea of going, uh, setting up a meeting with Delta Green after they kind of have a hit on us. I don't know if uh, things are just gonna be uh, go back to normal so to speak, with them. And when you really think about it, it's not the most efficient way to get the yellow sign to the masses. What if we were to say, catch lots of cats and paint the yellow sign on the cats mm. and release the cats in the city? Mm. Mm. Yeah, he's stupid. <laughs> this is a stupid idea. Right. Right. <laughs> no... Those are the last words you hear from Benji as he slips off into a catatonic view. <laughs> you can tell he's already <laughs> getting there. <laughs> um, okay, so okay. are you guys going to this? But, wait, wait. He shakes him. Don't don't, don't. go to sleep just yet. <laughs> oh. Swain. I'm awake. Where to? Give us an address. All right. Um... <laughs> Maybe Benji will pass out and like he'll snore and like the louder he snores, the closer you are to the <laughs> like like a metal detector. <laughs> Just like... yeah. Um, but maybe I can give an address. So like you guys, how... if if you guys call, if you guys call this number, this a real estate office number, you're told that you're told that both agents, both um, Marie J. Malthus. And Patricia McSwain are out working. Um, who who are you trying to who are you trying to get a hold of? Which one do you think? I thought they were in the same Patricia. office. They work in the same office. Yeah. Okay. Who's your priority? How about that? Uh, actually, let me go to Demon Web real quick and see the difference between them. Wasn't there one that was like a gatherer of artificers? I can't remember which one that was. Uh, yeah, one's like an armorer. Because so what we're if we got? Mech suits. Yeah, right. Carcotion. 
mech suits. Mech suits. That's exactly what I'm, I'm down thinking. for. Carcassian Gundams. Yes. Just <laughs> yes. No, what a, a sicker idea has never been. Yeah. yeah. Has, <laughs> never, has never been told. <laughs> That'd be cool. Um. Mm, was it Malthus? Let's see. It's Malthus with a PH and Malthus with a TH. Yeah. Just trying to figure out which one is the cooler one. Artificer centric. That's <laughs> yeah, the that's exactly. the PH one. Um Buildeth For houses, that. high towers, strongholds, Cathus down stones, uh can destroy. No no no. no. Malthus with the TH. Uh buildeth towers, filled them with ammunition and weapons. Hell's own armorer. That's the one I'll <laughs> <Okay. All right. laughs> So that was this Marie J. Malthus. Okay, so there is this, you know, whether, however the, the catatonic view happens. Um, let's see. It must be a full moon. I feel funny. So there is this element, like, and Benji, you call, you guys call the office and you're told that these two are not available. Um, but that being said, even then, Benji, Benji, the more you think on it, the more you feel like you know. Uh, give me a power roll for Benjarino. Benjarini. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Uh, success with a 54 under 60. 64. Okay. Benji, you you guys, you know where the, the office is supposed to be, but you find yourself a um uh, you guys find yourself at a kind of at like a, a new development like a new development area and benji and they're i don't know it's like they're very much like what is a man how does benji go about telling these guys to go somewhere that he doesn't understand himself like is it just like what is that like for benji mm, he's probably just like a divining rod finding water he's just like point right left straight yeah, like but not even really knowing where you're going. If I'm in a catatonic state, I don't know how that would... We'll say you, know. you come out of your state by then. Uh, the, the catatonic fugues are really specific and really significant when shit's happening. But Yeah, under okay. stress, isn't it? Yes, so it's okay. you have time to go in and come out. Um, you guys make it to a new development. It looks like a new suburb kind of on the edge, edge of Boston. Um, you know, it's the kind of place like where they're building a Whole Foods, you know, is like being built in this new kind of upscale area, but there's really not a lot here right now. There's even fewer people living in any of these houses. Like, many of the houses and lots have foundations poured and are beginning to be constructed. You know, it's supposed to be like a little walkable community, but it's definitely supposed to be for like higher-end suburb. You guys pull up, and it's... Because what day is it? It is... It's currently the 17th of September, and we're going to say it's about... We're going to say... And that is a Thursday. We're going to say it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon by the time you guys get there. You guys get there, and you pull up, and there's like some construction workers and stuff like that, but again, you guys have this kind of unmarked van. It's very in line with a lot of construction-y kind of stuff, so it's like, you don't really stick out. You guys are sitting there, and as... You're kind of sitting there, and Benji, you suddenly find yourself really at a loss for where to go. Like, you, but you don't know if this is where you're supposed to be. If you are you at the spot because there's really no one here, not really. The trail's gone cold. We look around, alertness. Yeah, give me that alertness. Success, 28 under 49. <laughs> you s Did someone else roll too? Did anyone get a critical or anything? I failed. Okay. No. Yeah, Benji, you're kind of in your own world. Uh, Benedict, you see, turning the corner around the street, you see a BMW. A fairly new BMW. Um, and it's kind of cruising, and you see a familiar-looking woman in the front seat. Um, you see... This uh, Marie J. Malthus, she pulls up, pretty much beelines. And again, like the roads, the roads here, they're like the streets are, are poured out, but it's mostly construction equipment out on it, and a few construction workers here and there. 
Um, and she pulls up and rolls her window down. Just pulls it right up by the van. Oh, wow. Is it, uh, hi! Madam? Oh, oh, hello. We know what you are, demon. <laughs> oh, oh, my! Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse my friends there. It's very forward We know what you are, him. white devil. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going through. Um, she, They're going through a rough time. She goes like, oh, well, I, um, she's like, well, um, well, it's good then uh, everyone knows everyone then, so I guess no introductions. Uh, do you just want to follow me or, or do, do one of you want to hop in? Well, where are we going? Can we grab a coffee or something? Maybe. I'm really. She looks at her watch. Uh, maybe she has like like a um, like a, a BlackBerry, like you know, like in a car mounted thing. She looks very busy. There's like papers on the passenger seat. She's like, oh, I I really got to make this quick. Okay, quick question. Do you know an uh, Ed West or a uh, Mister Wild, as he's known? Just and then we'll then we'll carry on. Oh, you but should you, know, you should follow. You, know you should just follow me. At uh, uh, times a ticking, times money. Can can okay. we perhaps get like a clue of where we're going? Uh, she she there's a there's a, a clipboard. She pulls it up, turns the page. Uh, number thirty four, right down here. Um, and if you look in your rearview mirror, out of all of the buildings that are here, there's one that looks. <laughs> fairly complete, at least on the outside, um, which is down the street behind you guys, probably about 100 meters. I say we follow him. And uh, just remind me, what are we doing? I, my friend knows what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. What are we doing again? I think, I, I think I've got some stuff for you guys. Uh, listen, I... I uh, someone roll me some type of role, some type of charisma-based role to convince her to to be more amenable to you. Uh, oh, you, God. <laughs> here's, here's a good quest. Oh, I got a... Fumble for a minute. I got a fumble. Uh, Hank um, got a success. Here's a question, Joe. <laughs> Does human intelligence work on demons? You know, actually, real quick, Benji, Ooh. sanity check. That's not what I was really I said for. sanity check. <laughs> That's what you get That's for you asking get. questions. A failure, sixty over thirty-five. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Do you want to roll the Here d4, or do you want me to do it? I'll do it. I'll sign my own death warrant. Let's see. D4. Here it comes. Two. You want to take that two sandy damage, or are you gonna deflect? I'll take it. Okay. you just recently gone over a, a threshold, right? Yep. Uh, what's your sanity at right now, by the way? <laughs> Breaking points, 24. Sanity is 33. Yeesh. Yeesh, um, indeed. Here's the thing, Benji. You're sitting here and you're looking at this woman and you're trying, you're racking your brain. Racking your brain of like, is this really a demon? This just looks like a person. Obviously, something's going on here. Benji, you think you know what this demon is about. You know, like, yes, you have the idea from the Ars Goetia of, like, what the idea for what Malthus is be able to do. Um, to build towers and fill them with ammunition and weapons as Hell's own armorer. You think that this demon, specifically for your purposes, is literally going to be able to pro provide you with weapons and ammunition. Yes! You think that wherever you're going and whatever this demon has to offer you, it's going to be in order to to suit up, to get guns. Hank, Benedict, you know. it's it's quite all right. Let's follow the scary demon and get lots of cool armor and weapons. Uh, did he, did anyone roll that? Did anyone roll that uh, that charisma based roll to try to convince her? Yeah, Hank got a success. I got a fumble. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was a small fumble. How did though. those two? It wasn't like measure a yes. fumble. He wanted tea again. <laughs> I just, just. Um, I'm gonna say that your success combined with your fumble that you get a null result. 
of that. that that's the consequence. That's, that's the consequence of your fumble. You, is that it cancels out Hank's failure, um, or it cancels out Hank's success. So uh, she actually she's going to do this. She's going to say, "Oh, listen, I I really got to go." She's going to reach in the floorboard and the bastard floorboard, and she's going to pull out a ring of keys. And they all have numbers on them. She's going to swing through them, pull one out, and she's going to uh, hold it out to you. You know, she's going to like like lean across out the window to hold it up to you. Um, okay. She's like, "Here you go." I'll grab it. Uh, she's like, uh, "We'll follow you then." Uh, actually, I got to go. Um, but just go ahead. Uh, uh, everything should be everything that's that you need uh, should be there. Uh, and uh, any good luck. Dangerous guard dogs. Creatures? Nope. Clockworks? Nope. 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 What a weird mm. thing to ask. I human that shit. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> so no, no human that... Okay. You can human it. Rolls up the window and... You can, you can human I it. I would like to human that. <laughs> Make sure you guys are marking That's your failures. That's a success on my human. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. always, always mark your failures. Uh, you, you have no reason. You don't think. You think she seems pretty genuine. Like, it's kind of hard for, I think, Benedict to mesh these two realities of this person being a demon but also being a person so it's like but as far as you can tell she's not intentionally deceiving you or intentionally pulling you into a dangerous situation just a nice demon who wants to give us lots of just guns a nice demon. Cool, 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 cool. so yeah Let's what do you guys go. gonna do go to the no house no downside no downside <laughs> absolutely no downside at all <laughs> Joe's just giving the us nice things Russian. I just feel like you guys have had, a, have had a really hard time. Um, and Joe just wants us to survive and not engage our backup characters. <clears throat> That's what he wants. wants. All right, let's check out this building. Okay, you guys pull up to the building again. This is like very. It's like a like a like a four bedroom, two story, like kind of nice house. It appears to be again like the siding and on the outside looks like it's all done. It, it becomes very apparent very quickly if you peek through one of the windows. Uh, as you pull up that the inside like they're still haven't put down the flooring the seal the walls and the ceilings haven't been textured and painted but the outside is pretty much done i'm gonna um, roll alertness okay see if there's any traps any carcosian clockwork babies what hiding are you in cabins. even talking about right now <laughs> of course that's <laughs> a failure all right um yeah so uh benji you like what is that what do you think that alertness check? Are you like, are you like looking in the windows or like, like kind of like, go walking around back or like, what's what are you doing? Uh, yeah, walking around the house. Okay. Yeah, anyone take note of all the exits. Yeah, back door, front door, garage door. Um, yeah, you don't notice anything, but as you, any of you who do look inside, um, you do see that there is a sign. There's like a, a piece of paper that looks to have been taped to... There's not even a rail on the stairs inside that go to the second floor. It's just the stairs. There's a piece of paper uh, with an arrow that points up. And like That's like taped to the... Um, and it says, delivery. <coughs> hmm. what, what time of day is it? It's about one in the afternoon. Okay. In that case, Wendy's going to stick a shotgun down her pants. As one does. <laughs> And uh, stiff leg it up to the front door. Yeah. Um, cool. You know, and there's going in. And there's probably also another one of these situations where, like, if when you get to the front door and there is like a little key box, and if you use the key that she opened, there's also a garage clicker in it um, that allows you to enter the garage if you so choose. But basically, you want to go in strapped. Is what you're saying? Right. Yep. Yeah, Hank's pretty much. Well, Getting into a new Airbnb, punching in the code, but with shotguns right. and flashbangs, tactical mm -hmm. vests on. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, <laughs> shall we? After you, we? lady. <laughs> uh, Ladies first. Uh, yep. Let's okay. open that door. Good. <laughs> you open the door, um, and again, like it's. You're not even sure if the water is on in this place. Um, you know, there might be a kitchen sink, but there's like the toilets are not even installed. They're just sitting in the bathrooms kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it seems to be, it's got that smell of new construction and there's this little sign that says delivery and kind of points up the stairs. Um, Hank will give a quick look around of the inside of the house and then head upstairs if he doesn't 
see anything. Are you, are you, are you yeah. talking about giving a can you, like, you just a alertness? Or are you just alert forensics? Okay. Alertness yeah. roll. Give me alertness. Critical one. That is a nice. critical. That is a one. All right, one. Hank. All right, Hank. Hank goes Hank through. May save us yet again. Well, I can imagine that maybe even Hank like Hank like maybe stops you guys as you go in, and maybe Hank goes in first. There is a thin layer of dust. Um, on everything, as is many construction sites. And Hank can see that it appears, and Hank notices, like, right as you open the door, Hank, you notice that there appears to be in the dust, like a trail, it looks like someone has carted a dolly back and forth to the staircase and gone up the stairs. You can identify, because this is critical, you can identify two sets of footprints. Um, but they don't seem to go anywhere on the else in the house. They seem to go straight upstairs. You can do a With a critical... Can I tell if they're both female or smaller shoes? They're not. They're larger shoes. They appear to be okay. uh, more male size shoes, uh, typically male size shoes. Mm-hmm. And you you do a sweep of the downstairs, and you're here. You're listening. You're listening upstairs, and it's so echoey. You know, if you've ever been in a building that's only partially built, everything's so echoey because there's nothing in there. You listen upstairs, and like, and you like strain, and and Hank, you are almost certain that you guys are alone in this place. Looks like we're alone, and whatever they left for us is upstairs. Um, Hank will start to walk right. upstairs. Same. Yeah. You make it up. You make it upstairs. There's a landing, a small landing that goes into uh, several of the bedrooms. The only one of the doors is closed. The other doors, the other rooms appear to not have doors. Like the doors are maybe leaned up against the walls or something. Only one room has a door. And as you open it, you see very quickly that this is the master bedroom. It's the largest of the bedrooms. It does have a bathroom. It does have a toilet that seems to have been installed. But more importantly than that are the boxes. The boxes that are stacked almost chest high against all of the walls. Uh, They appear to be, they're like thick cardboard boxes. And down at one end is what appears to be a heavy military style tough box like equipment case and even as you look at these and Hank you've been around you have some military or military s you know like government experience it does not take a genius to realize uh, to know what uh, NATO uh, 556 uh, full full metal jacket ball ammo means um, mm. oh these boxes are full and it's like you can look at them they're full of every imaginable kind of ammunition. Everything. Wow. Everything from machine guns to grenade launchers. Damn. Jackpot. Small arms, large large what? arms, everything. You know, like like literally like even like belts of fifty caliber ammunition. Um, as you guys begin to pull them apart. Uh, anybody gonna hit up that case? Why are you saying it like that? Who, I who, just, who wants to I open the case? I, I'm a satisfizer. Who? I'm a satisfizer. I'm satisfied mm. by this whole, who? and I think we just leave that big who wants ominous to open case. The case. Okay, so there's a. a t- I'll do uh, there's, it. You said okay. You said in this room there's all this like am- every possible every ammo. configuration. <laughs> it's all brand new. But there's one case that's unmarked. It's like a big, what? heavy, like, military uh, case. Have you ever seen, like, a big pelican case that, like, military equipment comes in? It's like mm. a big... Inside is cushioned, and it's thick. That's you fragile. Know, it's, it does not say fragile. Okay, before we open this, do we, we've, got that, we've got that phone number hmm? for Patricia, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, uh, just one moment. He, like, puts up a finger. He's going to dial the number. And try and get hold of Pat- Patricia. Put on speaker. To get a hold of the other demon, or the one that you just talked to. Uh, sorry, who did we just Marie speak to? Marie Malthus. Yeah. Malthus. So Marie, I'd like to talk to Marie. Uh, you get a voicemail. Hi, you've reached uh, Marie J. Malthus with Remax. Sorry, I can't come to my phone right now, but I would love to uh, talk to you about an opportunity to serve you for your real estate needs. Um, please leave a detailed voice message, including where to get back to you. And if you're calling about the case, just go ahead and open it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like a bit of a smoking gun. 
I feel a lot more reassured. I will go over and open the case. Wait, is there this just lady... ammo in this room, or are there also arms? This is just ammunition, as far as you can tell. And this case that you okay. have yet to open. Well, uh, Wendy points her shotgun at Benedict just in case she needs to put him out of his misery. <laughs> oh, can you point it at the case, please? I, I know you're a little confused at the case. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I'm still your buddy. I'm doing the humane thing. I'm still thing. your buddy. I'm, I'm... God, Hank, just look after this man. Well, and Hank, Hank points his gun child. at uh, Benji. At Benji. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Hank, you know, carrying, you know, we'll carry over your alertness check. Like Hank, like Hank gets to sniff this place. This this box does not appear to be obviously booby trapped. If that's what you're worried about, you know, it's like there's nothing. Again, it looks like a lot of the stuff has been placed here specifically for you. Um, Joe, I know you want us to open this mm -hmm. box. But you've you've imbued a sense of dread and fear and paranoia. This is the kind so of you did this, this is the DM thing. It's like, oh, I said this one thing, <laughs> and now they're reading into it. I can't even get them to open a box. <laughs> All right, let's see what's in the box. Uh, so we're in I a Mexican safe. standoff situation. <laughs> Hank shoots the box. To be clear, Benedict uh, holds a gun yet. at his own head. Yeah, I need everyone to roll me a luck roll. <laughs> We're we gonna get toys. Forty-two for Benedict. Uh, seventeen, Hank. Oh, fifty for Benji. I think that's that technically, technically pass. pass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. Nice. Okay. So as the explosion we ripped through the room. Um. No, I'm kidding. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, all right, so I think I'm going to go with, I'm going to make a few rolls here real quick, just for me. Don't worry about it. Blam, blam, blam. You're going to get covered in mechanical spiders. Okay. What if it's a boy, a baby boy? Uh, Hank, roll me a d10. Okay. Um... Uh, Benji and Benedict, roll me a d6. I got a 6. Benji got a 4. I got a 2. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? What are Joe's you... just chuckling to himself <laughs> maniacally. Uh, Hank, you pop open the top of this thing. Inside is something that I I don't know. Inside are a few things. Uh, it's guns, if you guys hadn't guessed. Lots of guns. Guns. <laughs> Lots of guns. Finally. Yeah, we've, we have been asking for it for two seasons. Okay, sort of inside, thrower. inside you see a series of military weapons. You see one, um, you see one, we're going to say, <clears throat> it's like a, a, an AK-47. <coughs> you see one. M M24, which is the military standard Jesus. sniper rifle. Nice. And at the very bottom, you see that this thing looks a little full, like that stuff is sitting on top of a foam insert. You pull those guns out and pull out the foam insert, and inside in two pieces in its barrel and body components is an M2 50 caliber machine gun with tripod. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does anyone have a heavy weapon skill? <laughs> Probably <Nope>. not. <laughs> uh, Where would that be? Just like in our it's, lurk? It's under heavy no. weapons, yeah. Yeah, in the middle. Zero. So yeah, I imagine... So I can tell you all about these weapons that I <laughs> yes. don't know where yeah, the firing uh, pen is. Benedict I think I have a everything about them. <laughs> I have a 50. In heavy weapons? Oh! Yeah. Holy shit. Oh boy, howdy. Oh, yes. Well, you guys are standing here, and I imagine, like, Hank, with his knowledge, he takes the barrel and slides it in the end of the 
uh, the M2 pulling the bolt back and turning it to cinch it in. It's so heavy, one man can barely hold it. But Hank stands up, holding it in like a Rambo kind of style. <laughs> what does is, what is Hank say? Oh my. That is so when, badass. When he starts lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> and at that, I believe we're going to go ahead and call it here for this episode. A little bit shorter one on uh, this one. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's probably a good place to go uh-huh. ahead and call it here. You guys are in this room with all with all the weapons. So effectively, I'm going to go and tell you, effectively, until, unless something really significant happens, um, you guys unlimited have unlimited ammo. ammunition for whatever it is you want. Nice. Um, there is no concern. Benedict. For that. He, he, he does turn to the rest and say, you, you guys know I'm a pacifist, right? <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> he says as he as he as he slides uh, around into the uh, the M twenty four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone, everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, those of you who are live with us, man, thank you for uh, joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned. We are going to do a, another episode here after we take a short break. But uh, how are you guys? How are you guys feeling? You guys feeling pretty pretty good? Does the guns make you feel better? Well, now I just want to this nope. goes. <laughs> Guns are blazing in somewhere. I don't care where. Fair. I've got news for you. Now we can. Now you can. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Uh, listen. Uh, if you're listening, if you're watching, head over to um, have it over to our Reddit or in the description of wherever you are. Um, if you really like, it, if you like what you're listening to, I assume if you're this far in, you kind of like it. Uh, please consider going to Spotify or Apple, giving us a good rating. It really helps out. Uh, and if you really like what you hear, you want to get a week early, uh, please consider going over to Patreon. Uh, it's only three bucks, and uh, becoming a subscriber, um, becoming a tri- contributor, you get access to some of our extra stuff, the sanity check, and uh, episodes a week early. I do want to give a shout out to Andrew, who has just joined us. Yay! Hi, Andrew. Welcome. Nice. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It does mean a lot. Uh, but that being said, guys, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Joe. I got you, thank buddy. You, Joe. Yeah. And, we uh, finally got a win, boys. Finally, <laughs> I'm sure the guns. I'm sure the guns it. will help against the unnatural. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So uh, again, those of you who are joining us live, uh, stay tuned. We'll be back here in a bit. Those of you who are joining us later, thank you very much for being here. Uh, join us next week for to see where these guys go and what they decide to do. But until then, stay safe and stay sane. Bye. Later. That's all.